And we're back, and we got the low C LMT mini monster truck on the bench. And as you can see, we've already started disassembling, but this is a project truck. Um, it has not been driven yet, it's fresh out of the box. I was gonna run it out of the box, but right out of the box, one of the links was uh, broken down here, one of the screws that hold the links up. So in order to fix that, you had to remove a few things, and at that point, I decided that we might as well just go ahead and put the parts I had already ordered. So I waited a few extra days to get more of the parts in. And we're just going to do some upgrades on this. Uh, shouldn't perform really any different, maybe slightly with one or two of the upgrades, but um, this truck is worthy of some decent upgrades. Um, just 1 18th scale, solid axle, mini monster truck. Looks just like the LMT, the bigger one. And... Uh, actually a very nice quality micro or I guess I would say very quality nice mini RC car probably one of the nicest ones out there so I love all the work and stuff they put into it lots of quality plastic and stuff yeah I really like the look of this uh, I have a buddy that bought one also uh, the gravedigger version he's doing a bunch of upgrades he did let me drive his uh, they're really gonna be a lot of fun and we're going to throw on some upgrades and we're going to start with what we got so far. Um, first thing we're going to do is get rid of the blue chassis and we're going to go with the trio. We're going to do a black chassis. So that's got both chassis plates in it. We're going to go that, that direction and get rid of the blue chassis and powder coated blue that's in there. And then we're going to do blue aluminum accent pieces. So we got a blue aluminum servo mount outer gear cover which goes there all the blue aluminum support braces um, we got bl the blue aluminum shock mounts um, this I'm not sure of I have these they are silver I don't think this is really going to fit with the theme I'm going with so I'm probably going to switch these to blue or black because um, the silver is not going to fit. I ended up getting these before I had decided my color scheme. So those are probably not going to go on. We also got um, these killer TLR tuned Team Lossy Racing shock set. Look like they're hard anodized, just like they're big racing shocks. Very nice looking set. Uh, no leaking in the box or in the bag. So that's a good sign. They are full of fluid already. They also have the tuned springs already, uh, different rates for front and rear. I'm not sure which ones go where. That's a very nice set. I'm excited about those. We got the Bauhaus RC low CG battery and electronics trays. Uh, they're a 3D printed. And that's going to get the um, see how high the battery tray sits over the top of the motor. Uh, these pieces actually mount them 10 millimeters lower down into the chassis. That's going to help with some weight. The battery weighs a little bit and the ESC, so that's going to get everything down. Hopefully, help improve a little bit of handling and keep it from being roll, you know, wanting to roll over. And we're also going to do a Reefs RC 179 Smart Micro Servo. Um, I heard that I seen a video that Reef put one of these in his, or Brock did, and so we also got the Micro Servo Horn. We're going to get rid of the Servo Saver. But for now, just to add a little protection, we're going to keep the plastic uh, steering links so that little bit of flex won't be as much as uh, forgiving as a servo saver, but on impacts and stuff, it should add a little bit more flex. So we're going to stay away from the aluminum servo link for now, or the aluminum steering link. So you can see I've already started disassembling. I got a little bit of a head start. Normally the body hinges up this direction. We've already got that removed. The body is pretty cool. Nice little setup with little twist twist locks. No body clips. Um, nice looking little. It's got the two-in-one Spectrum. Quite fast little car. Uh, or little truck. Wheelies on demand. Quite cool. It's got a, I think it's a 380 25-turn uh, brushed motor in it. But I've already started disassembling a few things, and this video is going to be about disassembling a lot of things because basically we're replacing the chassis, um, 
we are doing, oh, got one more. Also got the transmission, lower transmission case out of blue. That should beef up the lower mounts. Um, yeah, so we're going to pull the axles off all the way and go ahead and start replacing the chassis. So as we get started on disassembling this thing, we got a lot to tear apart, so I'm gonna have to be careful about organizing all the screws. Um, I think this might be my first solid axle four wheel drive monster truck in all the years I've been doing this. And I've been doing RC for a long time, guys, and uh, never had a Cloud Buster, never had an LMT. Now I'm saying monster truck. I do have. Those spacers. I do have the Kingsling solid axle mud truck, the large one, on the LMT chassis. I don't know if that counts. There's not technically a monster truck. Um, we are going to do aluminum lockouts on the rear of the aluminum hubs, and we're going to do the front C hubs and the front knuckles in blue aluminum too. We're going to do that in a later at a later time. I didn't order all that stuff yet. Uh, wasn't trying to go too overboard all at once, but I did get a lot of stuff. The Reef Servo, I wouldn't say is super expensive, but it's a little on the higher end, but should be well worth it. I really have been liking the Reef Servos I've been uh, using lately on all my crawler stuff. Make a really good product. A little on the higher end. Than a lot of other things, but servos is one of those things you kind of get what you pay for, and there is a lot of good servos out there at a decent budget price. I think Eco Power makes some really decent servos for the price. Those are something you can get direct from A Main or at your local hobby shop. I like the Eco Power stuff. Power Hobbies makes some okay servos, also, but. I like the brand name stuff. I usually have always been a high tech fan, but their servos are kind of hard to figure out what will fit and what. And I think some other servo companies have kind of passed them up a little bit. I'm trying to get these links undone here. Get that off, but you can't. You have to get to the links from the top, which is part of the reason why I disassembled this thing in the first place. I was trying to fix that one link, and I'm like, seeing how to tear it this far apart. I'm not going to put it back together yet. We are going to do the upgrades first, so we don't have to tear it completely apart again. All right, we got the front axle out. There isn't too much I need to do to that besides put the servo mount on, servo, and the shocks. Other than that, we're not doing knuckles or anything right now at this point. Okay, rear axles out. Okay, first things first. Let's get this uh, transmission. Let's get the gear case cover off of here. Just to change out the chassis is quite a bit of disassembly. Well, even to do the gearbox is a lot of disassembly. Anyway, we are going to switch this to a time lapse because this is going to take a while. We'll come back when we have the chassis back in this shape with the new parts. And then we'll uh, resume when we're starting to put the shocks and uh, some other stuff back on.
so <clears throat> we got the one side of the chassis separated most of the screws off this is an, uh, an aluminum plate that's powder coated well, that's the stock one the color looks it's more purple in real life than the camera it looks blue um, and then here's the aftermarket plate for, from Trio. Very similar. It's like anyway, you can see the finish difference. A little more glossy on the black. Um, the trail feels lighter. Now, it could be a crappier material, but it feels like it's... I mean, of course I could bend it, but it feels fairly stout. About the same as that. Um, powder coating might have added enough, just enough to it. Still got this exhaust on there. But yeah, there's the two chassis panels for each side. Is what I'm going to do is start assembling... This thing had a lot of screws. I mean, holy cow, that took a long time just to get that apart. And with this small screw, you don't want to use an electric driver. And this was the only wrench I could find that would fit, which is a... It's an 050, but my other 050 wouldn't fit, but this one does fit the screws perfectly. So if you have a wrench that isn't quite fitting, find something better, you'll strip the little screws out. I'm going to assemble the chassis halves together. Like, I'm going to assemble... Put this exhaust pipe on here and attach all the standoffs, the aluminum ones to this, and then I'm going to tear that apart, tear the transmission and the motor out of there, mount to the new one. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do. I don't have to completely remove all this stuff off of that one, but uh, a lot of screws, trying to keep everything in order, and I also left these attached so I could tell which one goes where. It'd be very easy to completely disassemble it and be lost and have to go through the manual. I haven't really looked at the manual. I don't know how good it is or good it isn't. Fun little project. The complete disassembly for the, except for the axles. Here's all the chassis braces. Look pretty good. Um, and a new hardware set, which we will probably utilize those they look like they could be a little bit nicer screws but we'll see so let's start by putting the exhaust on we got this uh, chassis done now I will say it was <clears throat> it was a fun it was an enjoyable little build but not for somebody that is new to the hobby um, I say that uh, takes patience you got to be careful with the screws you can't you got to tighten them you got to know the limits of small two millimeter screws uh, the transmission not too complicated, but there is two small. One is an E-clip, and then below the E-clip down here in the bottom is a C-clip. Super small, 
and I almost lost it, even though I knew it was going to flip off. I was trying to cover it, everything I could. Luckily, it flew and landed right over here, and was because it had a little bit of grease on it from the gears, it stuck to the table, or I'd be out of commission and wouldn't be able to do anything. So if you're going to do the transmission case, and even this outer gear cover, um, be careful with the C-clips. Uh, maybe make sure you have extras or be wary that, you know, they could fly. So do what you can to keep a hold of that. Uh, orientation and stuff was okay of the transmission. That was the most complicated part. And then just making sure you get all the braces orientated in the correct direction that they were from factory. Uh, you can see the, the willy bar is the plastic one. I th think... I don't know, I can't decide. I might go blue or black on that. They make an, uh, Trio makes an aluminum one, but for now we're just gonna put the plastic one on. Uh, but that'll be easily t easy to change. All in all, very nice looking stuff. Trill did a good job. I mean, they're not the most expensive out there. They're not the, definitely not the cheapest. I like the support that Trill gives people. Uh, yeah, the anodizing is really nice. The machining quality is good for what you get. Not the most expensive, but not the cheap stuff that you can get everywhere else. So I'm very happy with fit and finish of everything. No screws bound up. Oh, I thought I got a screw there. Um, everything looks nice. And this black with the blue highlights is going to be sick. I definitely like it. Got a few more aluminum bits I want to get, um, but for now, we need to put in the Bauhaus. Actually, for now, I think we need to do the shocks, servo, and bolt the axles on so that we can get to the nuts to tighten up the links. Then we'll put the Bauhaus lower center of gravity plates on, and I think we'll be in business ready to rip and uh, we're not going to bore you with that because there is a ton of screws on this whole thing and it there's a lot going on here um, let's just uh, take a look at the servo we got here hopefully this servo works because it's kind of long with the Bauhaus where I might have to modify maybe trim off the mount or whatever all aluminum case servo reefs 179 smart which means it's programmable by their smart USB connector that is additional that you have to buy it comes with just some plastic so you have to buy the additional micro servo horn which I do have some and the specs on the servo are pretty good for its size uh, 135 ounces at 6 volts 159 ounces at 7.4 and 179 at 8.4 and all reef servos are only programmed at 80 percent of the servos capability and that's what this number represents if you crank it up to like 90 because you can with the programmer you can even get more out of this now that's just something i heard from them during on an interview from reefs they put it at 80 percent and it puts a fill safe in for the servos they make really nice servos super fast probably some of the best quality on the market uh, regardless of what other people think reefs i think is is making some of the best servos out there especially for the crawler market so we're going to put this little guy in with its servo horn i think we're going to mount that up first we're going to mount the shocks to the let's take a look at the shocks real quick these shocks, I like them. Yeah, I know they're not blue, but I am come from a racing background. And I love the look of a racing quality shock. And Losi has always had. And not just Losi, but Team Losi Racing. Their race cars have always had really nice shocks. And these shocks come from, I believe come from the Mini-T 
line and people race mini tees and get pretty serious about the mini tee mini b racing and you can see how good these are aluminum caps threaded shock bodies uh, aluminum aluminum knurled ring aluminum bottom um, feels pretty good i mean these shocks are going to be sweet i don't think you're going to find a better shock than these i mean i'm going to say no you're not they're specifically made from the factory for this truck not just some random aftermarket company trail doesn't even make shocks for this and so that's why i went with these i know the color isn't right but they're still going to be sick so i'm going to get those all mounted up and uh we're getting closer Okay hey guys, we stayed up late. We got this thing put all put together. We're here at the hobby shop today. Um, just taking a look at it. We're gonna give it a run. I'm not gonna run it in this video. I'll do it in a different one. But we got it all put together, all powered up. Let's take a look at all the stuff we did. Aluminum treel, aluminum parts everywhere, aluminum chassis. I did use the silver treel sway bars. Kind of a nice little setup. Hopefully they don't vibrate apart. Glossy shocks, trail parts, and the Reefs 179, the Smart Micro. I can stop moving around so much. Super fast little servo. That's going to be nice. And yeah, this was a fun project. I would say that uh, it was very lengthy. There was a lot of parts replaced. And to do the gearbox and the chassis, almost every single thing has to come apart. They do make aluminum axles for this truck. I don't think I'm gonna do the aluminum axles. I'm just gonna do blue knuckles, blue C hubs, and rear hubs. But other than that, we're good to go. Oh yeah, and um, we also did the bow house. Low center of gravity mounts, so it gets them below the motor instead of sitting way up here up high. That should help with some cornering and stuff like that. Okay guys, hopefully you liked this video. Just a simple build on the low CLMT. I know there's a lot of them out there, but uh, I have not put out too much content lately, so it's time to start doing a lot more build videos and uh, stuff like that. So like, subscribe, and share, and thanks for watching. Thank you.